good day. Today we will talk about polar skin disorder. Polar skin disorders are diseases that are characterized by blister formation. By definition, blisters are accumulation of fluid between the cells. What are the causes of these diseases? It could be many, like genetic, physical, inflammatory, immunologic, and simply due to a reaction to a drug. But most of them are autoimmune diseases. Blisters are two types, either a vesicle, which is less than half, centimeter in diameter, or a bully, which is larger than this. Photos explain the differences between the physical and the bully. But in the types of bullous skin disorders, we have main two types, which is genetic blistering diseases like haley haley disease or epidermolysis bullosa, or immunobullous diseases which constitute the major group of these diseases and again these immunobullous diseases can be divided according to the level of the bulli or uh, vesicles into intraepidermal immunobullous diseases which is the superficial one and the deep one which is subepidermal immunobullous diseases and we have here in this slide many examples of each type The difference between adult type of bullous skin diseases and children is mainly in the etiology. In children, most of these diseases are genetic, while in adults, most of them are autoimmune. To reach accurate diagnosis uh, through histopathological uh, studies, we have to take a biopsy from the lesional and perilesional skin. Uh, also in children, we may be in need of electron microscopy to reach the accurate diagnosis. See what are the diagnostic tools for the bullous skin disorder. First of all, we talked about routine histology. Regional sample will be taken and uh, tested histologically. Then we have direct immunofluorescence tests from the skin. Also, indirect immunofluorescence tests when we take the serum of the patient and try to detect the autoantibody. Lastly, we have electron microscopy is another tool that are usually used uh, mainly in the research purposes. In the previous lecture, we talked about uh, some genetic blistering diseases, and uh, we know that these diseases are chronic and it is a burden on the patient and the family at all levels, for economic, social, psychological, etc. In recent years, discovery of causative gene underlying the disease, uh, diseases like haley haley disease or epidermolysis bullosa has increased the knowledge about pathogenesis, normal biology of the skin, and again, electron microscopy and immunohistochemical studies are important uh, in the diagnosis of these diseases and also in the research work. The group of bullet skin diseases that are immunobullet skin disease, which is based on autoimmunity. And these, again, chronic diseases that carry a bad burden on the patient and the family at the all levels, economic, social, psychological, uh, everything. And these were the subject. Bullet skin diseases in the recent years were the subject of investigations and many, many studies to detect the antigene that are targeted by antibody, and all of them were antigenes that are part of the adhesions between the cells, whether at the level of the epidermis or as a junction between the epidermis and the dermis at the level of uh, basement membrane. In genetic bullous diseases, 
the proteins that are uh, targeted or were defected due to mutation or due to inheritance of certain uh, defective genes were the base of discovery of these genetic blood diseases. Immunobloating and immunoelectron microscopy also revealed target antigens and specific epitopes. In this diagram, it is clear that uh, the structure of the epidermis and uh, it shows the sites that are targeted by autoantibody, uh, which lead to cleavage between the cells and lead to bullet formation. And the level of disconnection between the cells shows which disease is formed as a result of this defect or as a result of this uh, antigen antibody reaction. Erythematous diseases are characterized by pathogenic autoantibodies that are targeting antigens. What are these antigens in this group of the disease that are targeted by these autoantibodies? What are the function of these antigens? These are parts of the cell or parts of the adhesion bodies between the cells. So their function is cell-to-cell -cell adhesion within the epidermis or adhesion of stratified squamous epithelium to the derm or to the, or to the mesenchyme. Uh, there are also components of desmosomes or hemidesmosomes. We know that desmosomes are the bodies that are linking the keratinocytes within the epidermis. Uh, each keratinocyte to the neighbor, while hemidesmosomes are attaching the keratinocyte of the epidermis to the underlying basement membrane. So all these uh, adhesion complexes, parts of these uh, cell-to-cell adhesions, are targeted by autoantibody in immunopolar skin disorder, except in dermatitis herpetiformis, where the Targeted antigen is still unknown. The main diagnostic tools in immunobullous disease is first clinical, so the signs and symptoms, the history is important. Then we come to the histopathology through direct, where we test the skin by a specimen, or indirect through testing the serum of the patient. Uh, again, we have research techniques like immunobloating, immunoelectron, microscope. This diagram compares three diseases within the group of immunobullous skin disorder, pemphigus vulgaris, bullous pemphigoid, and dermatitis herpetiformis. So, in pemphigus vulgaris, the blister is within the epidermis, very superficial, and there are acantholytic cells floating in the vesicle fluid, and the main autoantibody is IgG plus complement 3 that are, can be detected by uh, direct immunofluorescence cells. In bullous pemphigoid, the infiltrate are eosinophil, and it is, the base of the blister is the dermis, and again, it is IgG and complementary uh, diet detected by direct immunofluorescence. In dermatitis herpetiformis, the type of immunoglobulin is IgA, and it is the main reaction within the dermal papillae. Uh, we can see these uh, IgA and also isenophils that are represented by these green dots are there can be detected again by direct immunofluorescence test. Within the group of pemphigus, we have at least four types. Pemphigus vulgaris, pemphigus polycious, IgA pemphigus, and paraneoplastic pemphigus. And these are again have the types. So these are a group of autoimmune blistering diseases that affect both the skin and mucous membrane. And what are targeted is the component of the dysmosomes that are 
uh, an antigen initiate auto antibody uh, reaction. Infecting gas diseases, these blisters affect both skin and mucous membrane, and auto antibodies are targeting a part of the desmosome, which is called desmoglyin and desmocholine. We mentioned that we have four variants of, of pemphigus. Coming to the first one, which is pemphigus vulgaris, the most common pemphigus variant, and usually responsible for oral lesion. Sometimes the patient comes only with oral lesions without any skin uh, involvement for years. Second type is pemphigus vegetans characterized by papillomatous proliferation at the flexures of the body, the extremities mainly. Third one, pemphigus polycious, very mild and the most superficial one. And finally, we have uh, pemphigus erythematosus that shares some features of lupus erythematosus because it affects the sun-exposed areas of the body. Pemphigus vulgaris is Interkeratinocyte adhesion uh, defect, and usually, as we mentioned, it is IgG type autoantibody, and the part of the dysmosome that is attacked is dysmoglyin C. Two photos show the appearance of the lesions. On examination, we may see only erosions in the oral cavity. On the skin, we may also see just erosions. Uh, rarely we can see uh, blisters because they are very superficial and very flaccid and easy to rupture. So by the time they come to us, we are just uh, able to see erosion. No blisters sometimes are seen. Tempicus vulgaris begin as erosions of the mucous membrane, followed by skin lesions. Lesions are painful rather than itchy. We have E. coli ski sign positive. Uh, age affected are middle age, complications, secondary infections, disturbance in fluid and electrolyte because of the case of the widespread lesion, a lot of blisters, so it looks like cases of burn where we may face electrolyte fluid imbalance. These photos show the appearance of the oral cavity erosion in pemphigus vulgaris. What is Nikoliski sign? This sign is detected by twisting pressure on a normal skin. So we see that the skin easily shears between our fingers and separates from the underlying layer. Pathology and immunopathology of pemphigus vulgaris. Number one, acantholysis, where we see individual keratinocytes detached from the neighbor cell and become protein free within the blister fluid. Again, immunopathology shows presence of autoantibody directed against the epidermal intercellular linkage. We detect immunoglobulin G type. In Perfigus vulgaris, the circulating autoantibody is directed towards dysmoglyin 3, while in the more superficial variant of Perfigus, that's to say Perfigus folicious, the main antigen targeted by autoantibody is dysmoglyin 3. Pemphigus vulgaris includes high dose of systemic steroids, 50 to 100 mg per day, prednisolone, or immunosuppressive agents like azathioprine, cyclophosphamide. Uh, this will allow further reduction in the dose of steroid and minimize the side effects. Topical therapy is only for symptomatic purpose. 
patients will probably need to stay on steroid for life, so careful monitoring and surveillance of the uh, side effects of steroids is required. The second condition is bullous centigoid, which is characterized by large blisters that are tense and intact and uh, based on erythema. The skin under the blisters are erythematous, and this affects older age group than the pemphigus vulgaris, and the prognosis is usually better. Clinical features of bullous pemphigoid, usually the patients come uh, elderly, uh, usually the blisters are larger, tense, because they have thicker wool. They are in the lower layer of the skin than pemphigus vulgaris. And the areas affected are thighs, arms, and it is itchy rather than painful. Uh, oral lesions are not common. Pathology of bullous pemphigoid includes subepidermal bullae, so it lies between the epidermis and the dermis and the whole layers of the epidermis form the roof of this, these blisters. The antigens detected in this condition named bullous pemphigoid 1 and bullous pemphigoid 2. Immunoglobulin and complement are deposited in the lamina densa of the basement membrane. We know that basement membrane composed of two layers, lamina lucida and lamina densa. So these complement component and immunoglobulin are arranged in a linear ma manner in the lamina lucida of the basement membrane. Bullous pemphigoid. In severe cases, we may need systemic steroids, but it is unlike pemphigus vulgaris. Maybe we don't need to continue for life, but in addition, we may sometimes need uh, immunosuppressive drugs like azathioprine. Uh, we can reduce uh, the dose of steroid by the assistance of these chemotherapy. Um, mild cases may be only treated by topical treatment like moderate potency or potent steroids. The last condition we will talk about in this lecture is dermatitis herpes formis, which is one of the conditions in dermatology that cause severe itching and it affects the younger age group than pemphigus vulgaris and bullous pemphigoid, and the main cause is gluten hypersensitivity. The features of uh, dermatitis herpes formis are a group of erythematous papule and vesicle and only on the extensors of the shoulders, elbows, thighs, buttocks, sometimes scalp even. And most of the patients usually do not have celiac disease or reporting any bowel symptoms of gluten hypersensitivity. It's so severe that by the time that the patient comes to the dermatologist, he can have a lot of scratch signs and eroded vesicles and papules. The pathology of the dermatitis herpetiformis include dermal papillary collection of neutrophils forming microabscesses. You know that abscess is a mixture of neutrophil and dead cells and cell debris. So here microabscess can be seen under microscope. Also direct immunofluorescence test shows a granular IgA deposit in the dermal papillary. So the whole reaction in dermatitis herpetiformis is the region of dermal papillary. For the treatment of Dermatitis herpetiformis, gluten-free diet is a must because we know that the main pathology is due to gluten hypersensitivity for six months to one year until the remission will be induced. 
Darsan is the drug of choice. The initial dose is 50 mg to 150 mg. Darsan is not only a treatment, also it can be used as a diagnostic tool because with the initiation of this treatment, there will be dramatic response and reduction in the itching, which prove our diagnosis of the disease. Topical steroid, topical antibiotic to prevent uh, secondary infection, and decrease inflammation, and also the treatment must be uh, continued for life. This table summarizes the differences between the three conditions that we talked about during this lecture, pemphigus, bullous pemphigoid, and dermatitis herpes deformis, these main three diseases within the immunobullous skin disorders, and the comparison in this table is about the age of incidence, size of the blisters, general health, uh, whether there are blisters in the mouth or mucous membrane, and nature of the blister, which depends on the uh, level of the split between the cells and uh, blister formation. Thank you very much for listening. Wish you all the success.